I'm Reeve, here with Rick Jewell at the Benzonia Public Library with the Veterans History Project and Remembering Benzie Oral History. Today is November 6, 2019. In the survey that you filled out before you got here, you said that you grew up here? Yes, I did. I grew Tell up in Buckley, that? Michigan. Pardon me? Where did you grow up? At Buckley, Michigan. Buckley? Yep. What was that like? It was nice. It was a small town. I mean, it was just, you could do just about anything you wanted and not be in anybody's way. So that was really good about it. Is that where you went to high school? Yes, it was. What were your parents' jobs? Dad worked for Shoreham. He, they did real construction around here. They used to be a construction company. And Mom, she was more of a homebody mm -hmm. until later on in our teens. Then she went and worked like for Four Star and stuff like that. So. Do you have any siblings? I, get, I had a, a sister who passed away, and my brother's still alive with her, so, yes. How did you get on with them? Real good. Good? Yeah, we got along. It was, it was a good, we did good, so. Do you have any family members that served in the military before you? Um, family members? My dad served in Korea. Okay. But, and then my uncles, they all served in the militaries, but I don't know exactly where they were all at to be, but they, a lot of them had served too. So, how did your family feel about you joining? My dad was happy about it. He just didn't want me to join the army. That was all he kept telling me. He said, "You're just a number there." So, that's what sort of swung me towards the Coast Guard also. So, so did you go to college before you joined? The Coast no, Guard? I never did. I got out of school, spent the summer at home, and went into the military from that point out. So, so after you got out, did you go to college at all? No. No, I did not. Okay. I did. I did a lot of training while I was in, so I had a lot of okay. skill as far as welding and all that kind of stuff. So I just sort of took off from there. There was no need. No, not really. Did you have any like jobs at all before joining? I did. I worked for Ron Cochran. We trimmed trees, mm -hmm. and I worked at Four Star for a while too. Um, but yeah, and then I worked for my uncle on a, on a farm, my uncle Buck. So. Yeah, that's kind of, I did a lot of work that way, did around the work, just local stuff, so, okay. yeah. So, you said that you joined from, you were there from 1973 to 1993. Yep. Why do you think you joined and stayed there for so long? Well, Judy's brother, he was sort of like a recruiter, so he sort of helped me go swing that way, but I plan on doing something anyway, just to, just to get, Something started is all it was because I knew I didn't really want to go to college, so mm -hmm. and that was a good way to go. And I figured if I did four years and got out, I at least went and did something. So, yeah. But you were there for twenty years. I stayed for twenty. After the first four, the rest of them just flew by. So. Did you leave any family behind like oh, yeah. your family? Oh yeah, we. I mean, as far no, I didn't get married until after I'd been in for a year or so. So then I really didn't, besides my parents and stuff, that was all about that way, so, yeah. So when you guys were dating, how yeah, did that work? We, Yeah, we were dating long distance, because when I went to, when I got in, I went into boot camp, and then from boot camp, I went to the balsam at Benadak, Alaska. So that was a long distance, and that's where we, I sort of proposed to her, to her from that area, so. From long distance? Yeah. Yeah, center of ring and everything, so. That's sweet. Yeah. Why, do you, why the Coast Guard? Oh, you know, I don't know, because I'm really not a water fan. Mm -hmm. I don't like swimming or any of that kind of stuff, which nobody could really understand. But as far as the other duties, I sort of like that part of it. I mean, floating, we did a lot of floating. I did a lot of sea time, so you know, it was all right. I wasn't a big fan of sea, but uh, some of the other duties that I had, I really, really, really liked, so. So, how did your training go? You mean as far as how, how, Like, what did you do? I, I was a damage controlman. And that's what, from when I went to ADAC, that was where I went. I went to damage control school from that point. And then from there, we just did a lot of different kind of stuff. I mean, we never had a locked in job. Like, I'd weld at one spot, and the next spot was construction, and the next spot I'd be doing some ant team work. And so it was a lot of different jobs associated with what we did, so. So would you rather just on one thing or just do many different things? I thought yeah. it was sort of neat jumping around and changing jobs. I mean, everywhere you went, it was something completely different. So I enjoyed it. I mean, I'd recommend it 
mm -hmm. to whoever wanted to do it. I would have a hard time telling them not to do it. So, um, so what's your most vivid memory of training? Oh, I'd have to say probably the, the ant team I was at in, in Portage. The what? The ant team I was at. Ant team? What's yeah, that? well, I would trade for, we did, if you know, all the buoys and everything and the lights, we took care of all of that. Okay. So I went and did, we did repair work on them, took batteries to them and did all kinds of, that was sort of neat stuff there. I liked that real well, so. So what was the worst part of training? Oh. Probably being on some up in the Bering Sea, floating around all the time. <laughs> that was it was cold and it was rough. I mean, that was some really rough seas. Just about every time we got underway, it was hardly ever calm. It was always really put it to you. So. Okay, I have to stop right here because my battery's gonna run out. <laughs> okay. All right. So, do any instructors stand out in your memory? Um, not so much there. I mean. I had a lot of, I had one guy I worked up in Ketchikan with, his name was John, and he was a, he was a civilian, because we did work with civilians a lot. Mm -hmm. They would be over us quite a bit, and in Ketchikan I worked with them, and he was probably, he did real well for me. Was he, like, can you explain on that, like, just, well, was he a teacher, or? Not so much a teacher, but he just took me under his wing. Yeah, okay. Taught me a lot of stuff. He was a heck of a. Had to work around. He got work all of us, even though he's older. Mm -hmm. He was just a real hard worker. Okay. Really, really enjoyed him. He sort of took over for our kids up there being the grandparents, and him and his wife did. So they were real close to us. Did you have any specialized training? Uh, yeah, I went for asbestos type of training. I did asbestos removal, and of course, during a damage control school, you did construction work and you did uh, welding, did a lot of welding. When I was in Eureka, California, I did a lot of welding on boats and stuff. I, that's what they sent us out to do, aluminum welding and stuff like that. So yeah, that was pretty interesting, so. Are you qualified, are you certified with any equipment? I was at that time, it's been a long time since I did it. So yeah, at that time I was. So what? welding, I mean, as far as aluminum welding and stuff, I did a lot of that, so yeah, I was. Okay. What was the hardest part of training? Hmm. I can't really remember any. My hardest, if any book work come involved with it, that's where I ran into problems. Okay. But, but other than that, everything else was sort of just fell into place and nobody was really, really hard on you ever, at least that I don't remember. It was just sort of, you, you got it as you came along, so it just wasn't too bad that way. So. What was your first assignment? Well, my first assignments, when I first got to the boats, I was a seaman turned to fireman. I did a lot of, we did a lot of engine room watches and stuff like that. So we did, I mean, it was a lot of just pipe work and just all kinds of, just anything that the ship needed at that time. And being a fireman and a seaman, you got caught with all the dirty jobs. So you did a lot of the, the mess, we clean ups in the engine rooms and stuff like that. So. Um, so what rank were you? Like, can you detail those? Well, when I went, I went from fireman to damage controlman. When we got out of school, then you were turned into a third class, and then you went second class, and then first class. And I didn't go any farther than first class. I was, I moved up at the rate I wanted to. You could actually do real well in there. That was one thing I was about it. You could move as fast as you really probably wanted to. Mm -hmm. But being a first class, I was happy there. I've seen guys retire second class. They don't let you do that anymore, but they, some guys just got it at a certain rate and that they liked the job they did, and so they stayed there. I stayed there because when I was gonna make chief, they were gonna send me back onto a boat. So I said, nope, I'm not doing another boat. And that's when we decided to retire, so. So you don't like doing boats? I, I got tired of doing them. I mean, after you've been out for so long, some guys just love that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, not there's nothing wrong with it, but I enjoyed being on the shoreline. I like doing, I like hunting and fishing and stuff like that, which I did a lot of fishing and stuff when I was on a boat. But, uh, you know, we just enjoyed being, a, I'm more of a shore body, I guess, mm -hmm. like motorcycle riding, so I miss all that stuff, so. <clears throat> so, what was the easiest part of the military to adapt to? Mm, the easiest part, I don't know, probably, gosh, I'm just, 
I really don't know if I know of anything that was, I mean, everything had its own little challenge. I don't know if it was easy. Mm, probably just putting, just, I don't know, just enjoying most of it. I just enjoyed most of it. Mm -hmm. I, I really did. I can't say I really hated any part of it. So, so you just fit right into military work? I pretty much did. I yeah. sort of surprised myself because I good. never thought I would get along with having somebody being my boss all the time like that, but it worked out pretty well. And then after a while, I got to be the boss, so. Okay. So what kind of friendships did you make? Oh, lots of good friends. That's what I'm saying. That's another thing. We made a lot of good friends. We left a lot of good friends. We, and now some of them are way out of our life. And every once in a while, we will hear from some of them. And so, yeah, we have a lot of good memories with Judy and everybody, my wife. We always, we made a lot of friends everywhere we went. So that is enjoyable. So I mentioned this earlier, but you said you posed over phone line and everything. So how did you, you did you use the phones and everything to stay in touch with your family? Well, not that, when I was on the boats, most of the time they didn't have all that kind of stuff. Okay. They did have a thing that you could go talk to them every once in a while, but it was like on a radio communication thing. It didn't have like a, I forget what kind of a phone system it was, but it wasn't nothing like what they had, like cell phones and stuff right now. So. It was, you only could do it at a certain time and you could only do it every so often. Yeah, it was once a month, you just remind me. So when we were underway, that's all we got to talk to them on that. So any time we were in shore, then that was different. Then we could go to the shorelines and make phone calls home, so. So what did you do when you, what, what did you do for recreation? Oh, geez, everywhere we went, I hate to say it, we did do some drinking, <laughs> but we also went and, we did a lot of stuff. I mean, we'd take off and go on hikes and, you know, when we were in, away from home in ADAC, we went and did a lot of stuff like that on the islands. And yeah, where we were at, we would do four wheeling and motorcycle riding and camping and fishing and hunting. And it was just a lot of stuff you did when you're in them for certain parts of the area, country, so. So did you have any time when you were off duty? Oh yeah, we did. I'd, uh, we'd get time off, I mean, it, it, depending on where I was at, sometimes you'd get the whole weekends off, and then other times you'd get, you know, we earned up to uh, four weeks of vacation, and we could keep more than that on at times. So I always had a lot of vacation on time, so I'd take off most of the time, and I always took off Christmases, so I enjoyed being around the family at Christmas time. So I don't think I ever missed a Christmas. Okay. Are there any funny stories that you can think of? Oh, right off the top of my head, <laughs> nothing that I, nothing that really sort of like, oh yeah, that was awesome, no. Not that we had so many good times, I just can't really think of just one in particular. I mean, like I said, we used to, when we were in Eureka, California, I took care of uh, housing there. It's about every Friday night, our house was a meeting house for everybody to come to, so we had a lot of parties there. Mm -hmm. We had, That's where we made a lot of good friends there. We, about every Friday night, she'd come home, have to cook supper for all of us, and we're standing around doing nothing. So, yeah, but yeah, we had a really good time there. I mean, and like I said, that was we just had a lot of good friends there. It was in like a housing unit, and we just everybody got along with us. And just about everywhere we've been, just about all of the, a lot of the younger guys like hanging out at our house. So we always had a lot of good friends. So, anything else? Oh, uh, right off the top, no, and like I said, we enjoyed being in Michigan. We did a lot of stuff here. I mean, we were in station in Sault Ste. Marie, and we were stationed in Houghton Hancock. Really liked them stations and enjoyed them very well. So that was the ant team that I was at, too. it was Houghton Hancock and Sault Ste. Marie. We got there and I did a lot of work on the base side of it, and then they stuck me on a barge. And I just really enjoyed that job because we got to run cranes a lot. So we got to do a lot of dredging and stuff. It was, you don't even see that in the military out there anymore. So that is completely gone out of it. So I got to be one of the last ones there. So it's completely different now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they don't even have that one anymore. So. I love the guy with the Christmas tree. Oh yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Everybody would come to our house. Yeah. We had some guys come over for Christmas, and one of the guys crawled under our new Christmas tree and passed out. And we woke up and he was there the next morning. So yeah, 
But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We had a lot of people at our houses and stuff. So. It's a great present. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was something. But yeah, like I said, it was some good times. Did you have anything you did for good luck? Not really. Uh-huh. No, I didn't really. I didn't do, I know not really. I never had anything where I had thought I had to have it up with me or anything like that, no. So none of your jobs were like high risk? Um, I did a lot. Well, I can't say they weren't high risk at times because when we were like a, we were out on the seas, I was outside doing a lot of work. So you could get swept off any time at all off that. I mean, with the waters and the waves and everything, you could get swept off the side of the boat up there a lot. So. Did you ever see that happen? Oh uh, yeah, I seen a couple guys go off. I mean, we were managed to get them back on board. We always had life jackets and stuff on. You had to, but yeah, they get taken off by. And if some buoys ever got loose on the decks, you had to watch out because if they took off, they were going. So especially in the seas, because I'm telling you, we've seen some pretty high seas up there. They don't run like they do on the ocean or lakes out here where they're really close together. But we got some pretty tall seas up there. So a lot of winds. Can you tell me about the night you were on the, the night that the end of Fitzgerald sank? Yeah, I was on uh, duty up in Houghton, Hancock, Michigan, and we stood radio watches up there. Mm-hmm. So whenever these guys come through, they would always call us to check in. So whenever they were going by, they would call us to check in. And uh, they, I don't remember, I believe I talked to them that night. It's, it's been a long time ago. But uh, yeah, they went, they had the chance See, where we were at, they could have actually pulled in there and stayed the night there instead of going up that way. Well, they decided to go up further, and that's what they didn't make it that night. But that was some of the worst seas I've ever seen on that lake. How tall do you think the lake was? Oh, my gosh, I don't know. I know they were breaking over the lighthouse. Wow. And that lighthouse, I'd have to say, if it wasn't 80 feet up or so in that area, I'd be surprised. But they, the waves were coming so hard in, it was lifting our boat off of the cradles. And we had our we had our boats out of the water by maybe about 20 feet or 30 feet up. And the waves were coming up and lifting the boat off the cradle because I was wondering what I was going to do if it got loose in there. But it never did. We anchored it down. So, But that was some pretty raw seas. Mm-hmm. I'd have hated to have been out there in that. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then the morning after? That's when, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it calmed down the next day, we got out there and heard about all that stuff that went on, heard that they couldn't find it. That's pretty spooky yeah. stuff there. Sad. Yeah. Um, so, did you, um, what did you do after you were stationed there? After Houghton Hancock, oh, what did I do? I can't remember what day I went from Portage. Oh, I went to Florida. You went to Florida? Yeah, we headed down to Florida. We went down to the Hudson. And that's another place. See, I was on the ant. I was in the ant team side of it quite a bit. Now down there, we took care. Of, we drove uh, five piles, and we put like uh, stuff out in the ocean. We put like lights on and uh, markers and stuff, so boats coming in sh- into the channels knew which way they had to go. And we did a lot of intercoastal water work down there. So we got to run. I got to run crane on that one too. And I was a damage control one, so I did a lot of welding and cutting and stuff on them things too so so was running crane your favorite part yeah i like running crane that was a lot of fun actually yeah. so when i got off that one up there in sault ste marie and that one was yeah it was a lot of fun after you got used to them and so. what is ant team acronym for it's a it's aids and navigation team okay that's what i say because when we'd set up buoy systems and We'd drop buoys, we'd set them up, we'd work on lights. So if you're ever coming into a port and you see red and green, that's what's telling you which side to be on. That's what we always worked with. That's the Coast Guard. Yeah, that's what we did a lot of work on. So. What did you say they had psyched out, like the base out of the... Um, was oh, it that the was the buoy, the buoy tender. They are not the buoy tender, but the barge I was on, it was a work barge. And like oh. I said, they just... After I got off it, I think they did a little bit of work to it, but then they got rid of it. But that was one we just, they put us out in the channel somewhere and just put us down and leave us there. <laughs> and so we would got to sit, we'd sit there and do our work and, you know, when them big boats come by, it'd lift your way up and that was sort of interesting. So, so did you, when you were at Sault Ste. Marie, did you work with the locks? Um, no, we didn't. I mean, we were buying, but we never had anything to do with that okay. at all. No, all we did there, like I said, when I worked there, I worked on repairing buoys, and they put us on that barge, and then they attach it to the buckthorn. 
and the bucks are is what they pull us all around and push us all around and set us up someplace to do our work. So they would just leave us. So, yeah. so you said you were who and how? <laughs> Um, Hancock and everything. Yeah. Did you ever go to Isle Royal while you were there? No, you know, something we never, I never made it out there. Never yeah. made it out to Isle Royal. I always wanted to, but we just never did. It seemed like we were always busy, so we never got to do that kind of stuff. So. But you heard the tourists thank them off every day? Oh, yeah, day. yeah. We've seen them come through a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, did you do anything like for community service while you were out there? Was there any, did, were you involved with civilians? Oh gosh, we were, yeah, as far as civilian work, I mean, we did not so much that, I mean, it, we did some work with them, but we didn't do, you know, like, go out and do anything for them, as, mm -hmm. especially if we, we took care of our own bases, our own, you know, our own units mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so no, not so much that way. I'm not saying we didn't get involved with them, but yeah. it was just nothing that sticks out, so. Did you and your wife live, like, in the barracks? No. Nope. So how did that work? Whenever we got any place, we usually got government housing. Okay. Or they would stick us in leased housing or some kind of a housing system. So, yeah, we, just about everywhere we went, we had some place to go to and stay at. So, okay. Yeah. But when you were single, were you by? The then I was on the boat most of the time. Okay. When I was single, I was usually stationed right on the boat. Or when I was up in, because I went up to Houghton Hancock, I was single for a while up there. And I stayed at the, they had like, on base units where you could live right on the station there. So after that, then we got our own place up there, so. Did you request leave to go get married? Yep, I did. Mm -hmm. Yep, I went, come down here and got, picked her up and then took her back up there. So <laughs> we should say her parents and us all went up there, so, yeah. Is that right, you, you enjoyed being in Michigan because it was close to? Yeah, we, yeah I, like, I enjoyed that. I, well, I like being, if you ever leave here, Yeah. Whenever you come back in, it's always like, well, we're home. So, yeah, that's how it felt. And a lot of places we lived, they didn't have all the trees. And when you rode back in and see all the trees, it was sort of nice. Not that Alaska wasn't pretty. And when we lived out in California, we lived by the Redwoods. So you go through the Redwoods, we could drive out to the Redwoods any time we felt like out there, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. so. so after Florida, you went where? After Florida, I went up to, oh geez, I get, so that's when we went back to Sioux St. Marie. Okay. So yeah, because like I said, we bounced back and forth. Anytime they put you on a boat, so most of the time they tried to stick you on a shore unit. So that's what they actually tried to do, is stick me on a shore unit on there, but I ended up being on a boat anyway after a while. Okay. Which is not a bad thing. So. And then after Sioux St. Marie, where'd you go? We went to uh, Sioux St. Marie, we went up to, went up to Kodiak, and then uh, that was when oh, we got stationed good. on the stores. On the what? Stores. Coast, U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Stores. Okay. That's where, and we did a few years up there on that, and that's where I did a lot of the floating. I mean, when we got into that job, now that was a completely different job. When we were on that, we would go out on the Bering Sea, we'd board all these freighters, or all these fishing boats, make sure they didn't have on, you know, have, they, have like, they weren't supposed to have a lot of halibut or anything like that. They, they could take out a paddock and all that stuff like that. They wanted. We'd make sure they had.